decided to do it all month long. You'll see me live my life every day of June. So get ready to be bored, cause this is Floon. Good morning, everybody. Today I'm doing a live stream as Miranda in 15 minutes. I've done a Miranda live stream in so long. I don't remember the last time I did one. So that should be fun. Flynn, what's yeah. ahead of the baby? A baby. Baby, 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 I'm doing a live stream in a little bit and I'm going to film some videos and stuff. When? Banging on a fireplace. I just did the Instagram live. It was really fun. I haven't been able to like improv as Miranda or interact with people as Miranda in so long. I forgot how fun it is. I like doing the character. I, I think it's a wonderful, fun character to play. I really love Miranda, but when I'm just sitting in my room or in the bathroom, like during my little Miranda series, filming alone all day, reacting to myself and not talking to anyone, like, I don't know, it's, it's fun, but it's not the reason why I love doing the character. I love I love touring for many, many reasons, but I love interacting with fans as Miranda on stage. Like it's my favorite part of the show always is when people come on stage and perform with me. To do a live stream with fans and like interact with them and give them voice lessons. And you guys are so fun that like I'm able to like totally goof around with you and like yell at you or be an idiot with you and you are totally game to play along. Like it was so fun. Okay, so I'm trying to post it to my Instagram TV. I've never posted um, an Insta live like that. Like an Instagram video or whatever. I'm such an old mom, like I don't even know how this works. Now that I'm dressed like Miranda, and now I'm like excited, and that was so fun. Now I'm like, okay, now I can film some videos. But it's posting, and it's just taking forever. Flynn, who are you looking for? Is <laughs> <laughs> Coco in the kitty? Say please, he wants the cat to follow him. What? Poo poo. Did the yeah. cat go poo poo? Yeah, the poo poo's in there. That's the poo poo. That's yucky. That's the poo poo. Let's get out of the poo poo. Come on, where's Coco? <laughs> There's the kitty right there. <laughs> He's going poo poo, let him go poo poo. Well, don't laugh at him while he poops, that's embarrassing. Give him some privacy. This huge closet, and the only thing I ever wear is. I'm in a bra. <laughs> Maybe I should put on a shirt for a vlog? There, much better. Anyway, I have this huge, massive, beautiful closet full of clothes, and I literally wear the same two things every single day. Like Eric and I were talking about how we could literally empty this closet and only have like three pairs of sweatpants, a couple pair of pants and three shirts and be good because we wear the same thing every day. Anyway, I'm getting dressed. I hope you can't see a reflection because I'm definitely not wearing pants right now. Um, I'm getting dressed. <gasps> Is there a reflection? Um, we're gonna go to a little local farm so that Flynn can see some chickens because he loves chickens and my mom loves chickens. So we're gonna go see the box box right now. What do you see, baby? <laughs> With a forklift. Oh, of course. He doesn't care about the animals and the goats. He cares about a forklift. <gasps> what do you see? A wagon. Yeah. <gasps> right here. Right there. Do you see? There's a little box box. Big bok bok. Wow. Look at that rooster. What do you think? What's that? He sees the dar dar. He sees that. That is more important than the chickens. Is that more important than the chickens? Wow. Oh, there's a papa. A goat? Yeah, there's a goat. Goat. Oh. You see, a forklift. <gasps> What's that? A goat. Yeah. Did you see the cow? Did you see the cow? What's the cow say? <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Like, <gasps> Oh, 
My sister Rachel has joined us for a social distance visit. I'm excited for the day where I can hug my sister again. That hasn't happened for a very long time. Yeah, bird. That's right, there's a bird. You want to see the bird? A little bird. You see the squirrel? Where'd it go? Where's the squirrel? Where'd it go? It ran away. Where'd it go? Good job, good walking, dude. Yeah, that's a squirrel, huh? You want more squirrels? Good thing, please. I think he went to sleep. Yeah, I think he went to sleep. Hey, he's sleeping. Papa! Papa! Where? I don't know where's the papa. Here, do you want to see the baby? It is baked potato night in this household. I love a baked potato because they're easy to make. You literally just poke a hole in it, the fork a couple times, throw it in the oven for like 400-ish degrees for like an hour. You kind of just do it until it looks done. And everyone likes different things on baked potatoes. A lot of people like bacon. I don't. I don't like chili on my potatoes. A lot of people like chili on potatoes. I like butter, cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese, and sour cream and broccoli, steamed broccoli. That is my potato filling of choice. But I'm curious what your potato filling of choice is. So tell me in the comments below. Um, everyone likes something different. And I'm also curious if this is an American thing. I feel like a baked potato full of stuff is very American, but maybe I'm wrong. Mom, is this an American thing? Baked potatoes? I feel like I think of like a steak and potatoes as like an American like, but maybe I'm totally wrong and dumb. But is this something that you guys do other places? I know there are people who watch me all over the world. So I'm very curious to know if this is like a common dinner anywhere else. And if it is, what do you put in it? Because I bet most people don't do the same things I do. What do most people put in a baked potato? Like chili or like ranch dressing? That sounds pretty good actually. I'm not gonna do it tonight, but. I'm gonna make my baked potato. It might not look beautiful, but it will taste beautiful. Normally this is also, by the way, a side dish for people. People don't usually eat this as like a dinner, but I pack it so full of stuff that like this is dinner to me. It's also a, like a lazy dinner night. I'm excited. Baked potatoes! Mm -hmm. Someone is doing the cup of shame walk over here. <laughs> Someone's finally bringing all the cups down from the bedside table in <laughs> the cup of shame walk. When you finally bring all the cups you've collected in your room for the week down to the sink. We both are collectors of cups by our bed. Okay guys, it's midnight and look at how, okay. I had a lot of fun reverse tie-dyeing stuff the other night, but I definitely went too far with this one. This one's not it. So I wanted to talk about something that I've talked about many a time. You guys know I'm very open and I talk about literally almost everything. I'm gonna start going to therapy again. Um, I have 
done a lot of therapy in my adult life. I think therapy is awesome. I think therapy has a really bad stigma against it. Like you're a crazy person if you have to go to therapy when actually therapy is just like going to a gym where you're working out your body while your mind is part of your body and it's important to work out and stretch and grow your mind. So I've been to a few different therapists and I haven't been in a long time because my last therapist experience was negative. Just I really wanted to work on my OCD and get help with that because I have a skin picking disorder called dermatillomania. I talk about it all the time. I'm sure I sound like a broken record because I always bring it up. So anyway, I went to a therapist to try to get help with that and I went for a while. I am a fixer. 100% like that's my personality. I am a fixer and that comes from me hating confrontation. I'm very non-confrontational. I just want everyone to be happy all the time and because of that, I'm a big fixer. If there is a problem, I'm not, I will not dwell on the negativity. I will not dwell on drama. I will not dwell in any sort of a negative space. I wanna find a solution and fix it immediately so we can move on and enjoy life and be happy. Like that is very much how I work. Sometimes that's to a fault. Anyway, I let her know that right away. And one of my biggest reasons why I love therapy is because they give you tools to better yourself and help grow your mind and your heart and who you are as a person to become better. And they give you tools and things you can do at home and things you can do in therapy and daily exercises and, and challenges and things. And I love that. Most of my therapists have done that for me and I love that. And this person, every week I'll be like, so what tools can I use this week to help me with my OCD and what tools can I use this week to help me with this, this, and this. And this woman would not give me nothing, girl. She would just try to convince me that I was sad or try to convince me that I had issues that I know I didn't have that were all really negative and just not me. Wouldn't offer solutions or help, if that makes sense. So I started to realize like, this is not a good fit. Like I'm leaving therapy way more upset and confused and more stressed. N no answers, no help like for months. Oh my God, I'm talking way too much about this. I'm so sorry, this is definitely really boring. <laughs> anyway, my skin picking has been up and down a lot in the last year. Well, it's kind of been getting better. And yes, I'm kind of always doing it, but it wasn't as bad. Like I, my fingers weren't in pain anymore for the last couple of months. And then the last week it's gotten really bad and nothing has changed in the last week. So I don't know what triggered it and why it's worse, but it made me go like, okay, I need to figure this out because I don't want to be having band-aids on my fingers and huge bloody sores on my fingers. I want to have normal fingers and I want to be able to paint my nails. So I'm saying all this to say that I've reached out to a therapist last night who specializes in OCD and in dermatillomania. I'm frustrated because every therapist I've had in the past, I reach out to them and within 24 hours they respond. And this person, I did like an hour of research last night trying to find the best person in my area who could help me with this and they haven't responded and it's been way over 24 hours. So I'm frustrated now, I feel like I need to do that research again. And when you find a new therapist, anyone who's been to therapy before knows like, it's so frustrating getting a new therapist because you have to like start from scratch. It's like going on a first date with someone. You have to like tell them your whole life and I have a really weird life and I have a really weird job that's really hard to explain to people. So I hate starting from scratch, but because I know my specific thing that I want to work through is my OCD, I know that like I need to find someone who specializes in that and the therapists that I've had in the past who have been incredible. Um, don't specialize in that. So I want to find someone who does. Also, I feel like saying like, I'm going to therapy might make people think like I'm in a dark place because you usually think of people going to therapy when they're in a really dark space and I'm not. I'm like in a good place, I'm happy and everything's good. I'm just, I've been like uh, more, a little bit more anxious inside than I normally am and I've been ripping up my skin a little bit more than I, a lot more than I usually do. It's just like the skin picking stuff goes like this and right now I'm like really up here. So anyway, there you go, that's the tea. So I'm going to upload some footage and do a little bit of editing and try to find more therapists because the one that I really wanted is not responding to me. I'm being ghosted by a therapist. I love you guys. See you tomorrow.